podcasting from the beautiful state of Maine. Welcome to another episode of the Learning from Leaders podcast, the show that focuses on identifying and developing the skills and behaviors that will inspire, empower, and compel others to follow your lead. Listen as Patrick's guests talk about the powerful leadership approaches they have identified and developed, which are vital for leading in today's challenging times. These are the same approaches that will positively impact you as a leader too. Learning from Leaders provides the right balance of leadership research with real world scenarios, making it easy for you to rise above your best. All right, let's start the show. Hi everybody, I'm Patrick Verano, and you're listening to another episode of Learning from Leaders. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about diversity equity, and inclusion. It's something that gets so much attention right now, rightfully so, within organizations. And what I want to talk about, aside from just diversity, equity, inclusion, which I'll give a definition that I came across for all three of those, but more importantly, to talk about what are the behaviors that allow us to address each one of those. And specifically, I'm going to talk about a model that I use called CABLES. And it's an acronym for six behaviors, and it's based on a lot of research in the areas of emotional intelligence, influence, personality, belongingness, unconscious biases, and irrationality, to name just a few of them. There are others in there, but I think those ones really are probably most pivotal. And again, provide a lot of the strength and and validation behind the Cables model. But before I get into how the Cables model addresses diversity, equity, and inclusion, I think it'd be nice to level set and try and get an idea of what do we mean by those things, right? Because we hear them thrown around a lot, but do people really know what, like what, what's the difference? What are they? So I simply pulled from one website. It's actually dei.extension.org. And one of the sponsors on it is uh, the Cooperative Extension. Regarding diversity, they define diversity as the presence of differences that may include race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, nationality, socioeconomic status, language, disability, age, religious commitment, or political perspective. That is a mouthful. They go on to say populations that have been and remain underrepresented among practitioners in the field and marginalized in the broader society. So then we move on to equity. Equity is defined as the promotion of justice, impartiality, and fairness within the procedures, processes, and distribution of resources by institutions or systems. Tackling equity issues requires an understanding of the root causes of outcome disparities within our society. Okay, so that's equity. Lastly, the definition of inclusion states, inclusion is an outcome to ensure those that are diverse actually feel and or are welcomed. Inclusion outcomes are met when you, your institution, and your program are truly inviting to all. To the degree to which diverse individuals are able to participate fully in the decision-making processes and development opportunities within an organization or a group. So you can see there is just, there is so much there when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. But I'm going to talk about it in a way that when we behave in certain ways, we address all of those. I don't need to remember all of those things within that definition. If I just behave in certain ways, they take care of themselves when I do that consistently. And I don't mean to make light of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Again, I believe strongly in that. I'm simply saying that there, are many, there may be many individuals out there that are like, well, this is great, but what do we do? I think that's why we're seeing companies set up committees for this and champions for this and you know, other companies that say, we don't even have policies and procedures for this. And some companies are, are so small that they don't have the resources to be able to define policies and procedures on this, but they do know how to behave. We all have that ability to us, and that's really what Cables provides. So when we talk about diversity, right, the presence of differences, populations, we talk about or reference them in ways that they're underappreciated or marginalized. Well, we can start off with congruence. In the cables model, congruence is that first cable, that C. And when we think about that, what it does is it, it's congruence is about walking the talk. It's about integrity. Is what I say and what I do the same thing. This may require companies to dust off their value statements 
or individuals to take a look at themselves in terms of saying, how do I, how do I treat other people? What do I expect from them? And do I, do I give the same type of respect that I am expecting from others? That's around congruence, walking the talk. Next is belongingness. And we, there's so much research around belongingness as it relates to physical, spiritual, mental, intellectual health. When we are included, when we feel a sense of belongingness, all of those things improve. When it comes right down to it, we're, we're pack animals. We rely on each other. We need each other for survival. Certainly thousands of years ago, if we were voted outside of the, the tribe, that was a death sentence. Belongingness is as important today. It might look different and the type of death that we experience when we don't have it may look different, but at its core, it's the same. It's our need to be included. The next is around appreciation also deals with diversity. And that allows us the opportunity when we talk about appreciation to look at things like unconscious biases and recognize that we come from different backgrounds. We have different histories and those can all be valuable to us. But when we think of them or we act on our biases of those things, then they really stifle diversity or what diversity can offer us as a society. So we move on to equity. Equity is about promoting justice, impartiality, and fairness in procedures, processes, and distribution. Again, dusting off the values, we can look at that. But if we want to understand root causes, that's going to require listening on our part to really understand what is going on. Too much right now, I think, is we're listening to undermine somebody where we really need to be focused on listening to understand, not to undermine. As well, when we talk about understanding root causes, the disparities that that causes other people, we can behave with empathy. That's the E in that model of cables. What is it like to be that other person, to experience those disparities? And how would I feel if that was me? Lastly, it's around specifics, clear expectations. Do we have clear expectations as it relates to promoting justice and impartiality and fairness through our procedures and processes and distribution of resources? Do we have clear expectations? Because if we have clear expectations, then it's easy for us to go back to this and then hold each other accountable to that. It's right here. It's part of our policies and procedures. It's part of our value system where we say these things are important. I've seen some value statements that actually spell out diversity in them, the need to celebrate that, or individuality. All of those things, again, become important here in regards to setting clear expectations. And then when we move down to inclusion again, right, it's an outcome to ensure that all actually feel and or are welcomed, right? So we're back to appreciation for me and belongingness, right? This sense of when we create an environment of belonging, and again, there is so much research, and I talk about all of these in different podcasts that I've already done in regards to how important these are. But lastly, what we can look to is in the last sentence of inclusion, it talks about individuals feeling as though they have fully participated in decision-making processes and development opportunities within an organization or a group. That requires listening, right? Other people to listen to them, to understand what are their issues that if I'm part of the decision-making process, that means you would have had to have listened to my input to be able to make that happen. So again, we can see here on each one of these areas, diversity, equity, and inclusion, we've taken the cables model and really overlaid it over the top of that and demonstrated how these behaviors address each one of these areas powerfully when they're modeled. And in the work that I do, again, with organizations, there's a, a one sheet, a diagram that I put together to really help people to be able to continue to practice this, right? Because that's how we get better at this is by really reminding ourselves and, and challenging ourselves to look at each of these. When we talk about congruence, two of the questions that you can ask yourself is, do my actions match my words? Secondly, you can ask yourself, am I consistently modeling what I expect from others? Do I want to be included? Do I want to, my diversity, my viewpoints, my uniqueness to be respected? Do I want to feel that there's equity in terms of, of my position here? I'm guessing we're going to say yes. Well, and if that's the case, then that means we need to walk the talk. We need to provide it for other people as well. So when we move on to appreciation, we talk about or the two questions we can ask are, am I consistently recognizing the positive contributions of others, right? The diversity of others around me. 
And secondly, am I open to understanding and appreciating the diversity of others? And a key word in there, am I open to it? Open to understanding. We really need to be in that place where we're curious, we're open to this. We all have different backgrounds. We come from different places, different histories that really can be beneficial to us if we look at it that way. And it's not really looked at in a way of a bias toward an individual. So important. Next is belongingness. Am I positively contributing to the well-being of those around me? And have my behaviors supported a culture of inclusion? So here we are, the word inclusion is right in that. Just like in appreciation, we talk about appreciating diversity. So we hit on those just in two of the behaviors directly. Next, we move on to listening. Have I been practicing four-way listening? And that's eyes, ears, mind, and heart, or with compassion. And again, we go deeper into that in the work that we do in terms of helping people understand that that really is a muscle. To me, it's more like a superpower. When you really understand how to listen on all four levels, with all four of those senses, we really, we elevate our ability to create connections with people. But next we ask, am I listening to understand and not to undermine? And right now, if there's one thing that, that I've witnessed is a lot of people that are listening to undermine somebody else, not listening to understand. They're listening only until a person finishes talking because they've already got their response ready. This is about being curious. This is truly about listening to try and understand. Much more difficult, much more important though. Next, we talk about empathy. Have I made an effort to see things from someone else's point of view? So important to really try and see where somebody else is standing. What's it like from where they are? And I think as importantly is, is my demonstration of empathy sincere? Because that will be sniffed out when people can sense when you're not being sincere, where your level of empathy is more grandstanding or you know, you're know you patronizing somebody else. And I would say there are probably some organizations, individuals that are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and it's not sincere. They're doing it to look good to other people, to check a box, but not really focusing on how do we really do this? Why is this important? Lastly, we'll talk about it from the standpoint of specifics. Have I set clear expectations that are understood and agreed upon by all involved. As well, have my behaviors created a culture of ownership for what's expected? And that part of ownership is so important. I've worked with organizations that had individuals on a team that were contagions. They, they really, they brought the entire team down by their disruptive behaviors, by how they treated other people, um, holding people outside of the group, ostracizing people, not respecting diversity, taking equity away from individuals, denying them that. And what happened is, is that over a very short period of time, when the group decided to behave in a certain way and to hold themselves to certain standards, they suffocated out those bad actors. And those people decided to leave the organizations that they were in because they realized that there wasn't a place for that type of behavior anymore. That's the power that this can provide. So as we wrap things up here, I'll challenge you. You're the architect, the engineer, and the builder to your environment around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it really is, it's your behaviors that will determine the strength of this and your support of this. So I challenge you, think about those behaviors. What's one or two that you think would be helpful in terms of your relationships with other people or to support or promote diversity, equity, and inclusion where you are? What can you put into play? And as I close this out, as always, I hope you're able to go out there and Rise above your best. Peace. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Learning from Leaders podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time, keep rising above your best as a leader.